Tom, so first of all, thank you so much for joining me. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show. <laughs> well, Maria, thank you very much for having me on your show and greetings from Oman. I wonderful. I'm, I'm glad you've made it back to Oman. And uh, obviously it's nice and hot like it is in the UK at the moment. But, but Tom, I'm going to get right to it. I, I want to ask you a question about London Speaker Bureau. People may not know that London Speaker Bureau has actually been a remote organisation for some time. Um, but not only has it been a remote organisation where people are working all over the world, but it's also been successfully growing every year. And not only that, you're turnover your staff turnover is minimal which is just phenomenal all three of these things are incredible what advice can you give leaders who are now having to go remote about running a remote organization successfully um good question maria and yes we uh we started uh having people working from home right from the moment we we set up the company 25 years ago so we've been doing it for a very long time. And so it feels completely natural now. We have um, people in 33 locations actually dotted around the world. And um, we've never had any real problems. It does involve trust. It, it, it is a cultural issue. But all I could really say to everyone is just do it. Um, some people find it easier than others. Some are natural, some struggle with it and need to be connected or into an office environment more. Um, but certainly, we realize that particularly with more women coming into the, into the marketplace, the workplace, that a lot of them wanted to be at home. And so we enabled it as LSB is 80% women. Uh, and you know, just to add on these sort of things now, which are becoming very popular, the other thing we moved to, which I'm very proud we did in the UK, is we moved from a 5-2 working week to a 4-3 working week five years ago. So governments and uh, unions are now talking about people working four days a week only. Well, we've been doing that for five years and uh, we intend to roll it out more and more. People talk about work-life balance and a lot of big corporations talk about work-life balance, but they don't implement it. Work-life balance would really mean three and a half days working, three and a half days at home, not working. And that's what I aspire to at LSB globally. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I don't think I'm ever going to achieve that because for me, um, I'm a bit like Adrian Furnham, who's one of our speakers, a psychologist, always says, for him, work is fun. And actually, for me, work is fun. So I don't think I'll ever manage that. But it, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful um, aspiration, especially for people with families. I think it's wonderful. So, Tom, you said 33 locations, which is phenomenal. Can you give us an overview of what you're seeing across these uh, locations? Are there some green shoots in this pandemic? Well, I can see some green shoots behind you, Maria, which uh, <laughs> uh, I think are coming back into the global economy. Um, look, COVID's been an extraordinary time for us all, uh, and it's not ended, as we're, we're all aware as well. But I like to think we're past the worst. I think March to May, particularly in Europe, were the worst. Globally, we've seen, and I speak as um, the CEO of uh, a global speaker bureau, we have seen demand destruction on really an appalling scale, at least five times that of the financial crisis. And um, if I went through some of our markets, I would probably start or do it in COVID order, you know, start with China. China closed down last December and has been pretty well closed ever since. So we've done absolutely no business there until very recently, neither live events, obviously, nor webinars. Um, to continue the green shoot theme, yeah, I mean, I see green, shoot, green shoots coming in many places, particularly in countries like Russia, which is a maverick economy, which never really shut down in the same way, and they come back very robustly. And I'm sure it's something to do with their history, but they're coming back very robustly. Um, the Gulf, again, is... Uh, in, in still in very much shutdown mode. And there's a lot of other issues here, not just uh, COVID, but the price of oil, tensions in the region. And um, I'm pleased to say in, in, in the Middle East, 
one of the green shoots we discovered was launching a new product, uh, expert consultations, um, which we found to be very effective for governments, which was critiquing public policy before it became public. And we have done a lot of that through COVID, uh, I think, as you're aware. And it's something which we're going to try to do globally. It's where senior figures, but particularly former political leaders, critique government policy before it's public. It's a fascinating space. And in a way, the green shoots of COVID are that it makes you think about your business more. Um, but to continue the, the round the world trip, Europe's been very tough, as you know. Um, our major markets are UK, France, Germany. We've seen demand down hugely, and we're looking at a business really currently 20% the size of what we would expect. To put that into numbers, uh, we'd expect to do about 600 events in that period in Europe, um, 600 live events. We did almost zero live events uh, and probably 120 webinars, something around that. So it's kind of that kind of demand structure going on. America has been very much uh, psychologically damaged by COVID. It's still in a funny state, but being America, its response will be robust. And you see that from the reaction of the Fed, and you see that in the, <clears throat> in the reaction that Las Vegas has already record sales for exhibitions for next year. America is always a good industry for those in the speaker world to look at. It is the largest, it's the most historical, and also it's got millions of people who work in it, who are mainly in small businesses and currently furloughed. Is Trump going to let millions of workers starve? No. You know, business is coming back. Um, so green shoots, Maria. Yeah. But did I see us transiting to a, only a webinar business? Huh. Of course not. Of course not. I didn't even know the word web seminar, really. It's the web seminar to be correct, technically. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Tom, picking up from the web seminar uh, and the virtual, uh, do you think that virtual, um, and I think people are calling hybrid as well, where there's a live and a virtual element, do you think this is going to be around forever, the virtual part? Do you, do you see it be playing a part in, in, in the mix? Yeah, for sure. Virtual is part of our industry now. And um, essentially, it's not a new product. It's just a new medium. <clears throat> and it's here to stay. Um, and it's going to make up a large chunk of our revenue, probably 25% once we're post-COVID. Uh, I thought it was coming. It was pretty obvious that climate change was accelerating this movement to online. Um, but also, I have to say that talking to a lot of people around the world, I am 100% confident that live events are coming back and coming back big. We now have a kind of split market of value webinars against premium live events. That's going to be the future. And yes, you're right about hybrid. Some conferences and events will, will have a mixture. Um, there could be a degree of less <clears throat> international travel. To an extent, that will come back, and we're in the hands of politicians, really, um, to decide where that one goes. But humans need to network. It's often the most important thing that conference delegates say in feedback forms. And uh, it's where often the really important contact and learning comes as well. And so I'm, I'm confident, 100% confident. But at the same time, having said I, I never really like webinars, <clears throat> I do embrace webinars. Not least are they very efficient. But there's no visas to deal with, no accommodation issues. Fees are far lower. And um, fees are incredibly low now uh, for almost all speakers. But particularly for those who were premium priced before, they're realizing that if they're going to sit at home for half an hour, they can't charge big fees. And guess what? Even the Americans are learning this. Yuppie. Yippee. 
So do you think that's going to continue, though, the, the lower fees, or do you see them creeping back up as things improve? I think there will be, um, for live events, they're definitely staying. They might even go higher. The whole premium of the live event. It's like going to see your favourite rock band. You pay for it. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, and I think this will depend on different markets uh, in different places around the world. What I can say, operating with... 18 different offices in terms of different countries. Uh, the, the emerging markets are still learning the trade and they're still open to bigger fees and speaker bureaus having, having bigger margins. So there's a long way to go in our industry till it's a mature market globally. It presents many, many opportunities um, and I'm very excited about it. Fantastic. And on that, actually, do you see the role of the Speaker Bureau changing at all? Yeah, I, I do. Um, speaker Bureaus need to change. But you can't just change. Um, I think what they need to do, um, or to think about anyway, is two things. One, should they be more of an agency? And by that, have exclusive speakers. Exclusive speakers are going to be essential for top quality speaker bureaus. You don't need a lot, but you'll need a core because it drives traffic online and it drives reputation. What else can speaker bureaus really offer um, apart from just a platform? I think advice would be the other key word. And if speaker bureaus are to offer advice, they need to have good consultants experienced consultants and that means they need to recruit good people so my advice to speaker bureaus generally is if you want to stay competitive globally or in your local market you're going to have to recruit good people who can offer good advice why should microsoft use us maybe a little bit because they've got um, to go through that bureau for an exclusive speaker but it's much more about the quality of the relationship. So some speaker bureaus will need to wise up, but there's room for, there's room for lots more, uh, and particularly in, in many markets, yes. Okay, super. And what are the main themes that you're seeing that clients are currently looking for? Are, there, are you seeing any trends in sort of topics and themes at the moment? I'm trying to set this in a sort of post-COVID, which I know is, is, is optimistic, because I'm sure there'll be many waves of COVID. And I just hope my point on COVID is simply that I hope politicians have learned their lesson and next time round we'll only send uh, people over 75 home so that we can function. Um, but um, yes, we will see all sorts of things. Um, and I was gonna particularly mention um, here talk about what um, or how speakers might be affected. Is that appropriate here? That would be fantastic, um, thank you. I've never liked the term speaker actually. We're called London Speaker Bureau, but that's we set it up 25 years ago. The reason I've never liked a, the word a speaker is because I prefer someone to define themselves as an economist or a politician, or a futurist. Um, I think it helps them to be distinctive in a very competitive marketplace. You're a speaker, I'm a speaker, we're all speakers. We have to be careful. Yes, we might be in the global speaking industry, but actually I am thinking about reducing the way we use the word speaker in all our marketing, because I don't think it's clear. And I'd prefer to use other words like advisor or mention words which I think are more important in the future, like boardroom. But in, but in terms of speakers going forward, there's a lot around, and I'm afraid a few, like in any industry, may suffer. They may even stop being a speaker. But quality will always shine through. So if people are very, very good at their topic, they will have a great future ahead of them. Because this period is only confirming my belief 
that we're actually expanding our market globally. And as countries and regions develop, um, obvious ones being parts of Asia, parts of Eastern Europe, parts of Africa, parts of South America, these are bringing more and more corporations um, into the fold, holding events and meetings. They're all going to need advice. They're all going to need speakers. So um, that's kind of where I sit. You know, I hallelujah when you said the term speaker, because this is something that um, I bang on about all the time. Um, I have to, as you probably don't know, because you probably don't hear me banging on too much about this, but I do. I'm always saying to speakers, you know, you've got to differentiate because there's so many. Anybody can speak, let's be honest. And I want, I want expertise. I want to know what's your expertise? What are you bringing to the table? The speaking is just a way of delivering that expertise, because as you say, you, you know, you... You can do it, deliver it in all no, sorts. Totally. Yeah, super. Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you for that. So, um, Tom, you've run the London Speaker Bureau in other economic recessions. You mentioned earlier that this is probably worse than any we've we've um, experienced before. But with all recessions, we will come out, and there will be growth afterwards. But do you think this one might play out differently? Um, are, are you optimistic? I'm very optimistic. It's not just optimistic for optimistic sake. It's based on my um, talking to LSBers in all our different markets, from talking to governments, which I do. Yeah, I'm optimistic. Um, you know, COVID is a terrible thing and has had a huge impact. And to shut down economies, it's really so brutal. And I feel for so sorry for so many people. I feel particularly sorry for those who've set up businesses in the last few years who don't have any cash. Because the one thing the financial crash taught me was that cash is king and that you must have cash for a rainy day. Everybody, whether you're an individual or a corporation or any type of organization, must keep cash for a rainy day. Because something like this will come again. And it may not come again for 10 years, but it will come. I always thought it was going to be some sort of terror thing which shut the global system down. At LSB, we were prepared for this. But um, a lot of people weren't. And um, we will see the carnage after all the furloughing, um, depending on your country. Obviously, not all countries have, have done furloughing. But in the UK and Ireland, which have furloughed 100%, we will see the huge damage after. Um, and it won't be pretty. But... Um, no, I remain, Maria, super confident. And, and I'm really, in a, in a way, in a slightly odd way, rather pleased that we are now all using webinars and clients are used to using webinars. We all know they've got a place. They're not perfect. We know that networking is, is difficult. We know people are getting tired of talking through Zoom interfaces. But my God, does it play a role? Is it useful? And um, it's here to stay. Fantastic. And you might already have answered this, but I, I want to end on a positive note again. Although, Tom, you are optimistic through and through and always have been. And in all the years I've known you, you always have been, which is wonderful. My last question to you is, what is the most positive thing to have come out of this experience for you and the organisation? Um, I'll answer that separately if you're if, if they're separate questions i mean for lsb i'll be frank i'm proud that we have kept intact our international network and we are fully ready to operate um, i'm also pleased that during covid we've kept our marketing up so our brand is out there globally. We didn't market at the beginning of COVID because the world was in kind of psychological meltdown. But now it's much clearer, we're all more confident, governments seem to have a grip on things to an extent. So those would be two things. Um, and I'm also just proud, touching on something you mentioned earlier, that we did introduce this culture of homeworking 25 years ago. 
and now we're using it more than ever. But we're also at LSB totally comfortable about using it. So those would be the three things um, to do with LSB. In terms of myself personally, I mean, I had a kind of an odd COVID and that I got locked out of Oman for three and a half months. I've only got back here the day before yesterday. I was on a business trip to Germany in the beginning of March or March 10, when they closed the airport and the borders in Oman and I couldn't get back. And the silver lining of that was I retreated to my little log cabin on the west coast of Ireland. And I spent the last three and a half months there in a country which has managed COVID beautifully and without a government. Um, so I had a great time. I used to work from eight till two and walk on the hills in the afternoon. And it gave me an opportunity to think a lot about my business and about myself. And I concluded that post COVID, the world is gonna be a wonderful place much more considerate and for our business industry generally it's going to be good that is such a wonderful note to finish on tom thank you so much maria always good to see you thank you very much